Oops. Turn that one off. I'll get the hang of this by the end of today. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. Um, so we are moving ahead. Uh, I don't know how we are. We are just over halfway, I think. We've had one, two, three, four, five, six speakers. Uh, yeah, we've had six, uh, five speakers, sorry. Uh, we've got four more to go. So uh, our next speaker is Jesse Cox. Uh, let's bring Jesse onto the stream. Hi, Jesse. Um, your title is, I think you have the you have the longest job title of all the speakers because I remember this one going to edit the edit the cards on the website and it was the one that made me go into three lines. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you are Director of Automation Sales Engineering and Development or Automation Sales Engineering. There should be a comma there, but I'm guessing sales, not all of sales. Sales Engineering, yeah. Sales Engineering and yeah. Development. <laughs> Automation, yes. Um, Indeed, at Wago yeah. Corp. So, uh, so I, I know Wago for, for creating the little um, connectors and things, but uh, right. I've yeah. discovered you do a lot more than that. So I shall... These, uh, these little guys right here, I'm sure. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, the same technology that we bring to the to the connections, we, we bring it to automation as well. Cool. We've been a, a long established automation company, and I'll kind of I'll do a bit of a flyover of who we are as a company. But for now, let's just um, yeah, let's jump right in. Thanks for Adios. having me, Sam. Uh, super excited to be here. Uh, I've been a a big fan and a big proponent of the Node Red platform for several years now, and it's a tool that we've embraced really. Uh, deeply here at Wago in trying to trying to bring along the industrial automation world into um, you know into the open source realm, and so that's what I'd like to talk about today. So we'll do a little introduction to start. Uh, we'll talk about hyper automation and the things that Node Red brings to um, our industry. Talk about little bit of portability and then deployment and some some really neat tools and partners that we use for this. So just to jump into it, I do have a long job title. Um, I usually just introduce myself as an automation guy at Wago, um, but um, I oversee the, the sales engineering group as well as the development group at Wago in the US and work closely with our manufacturing in Germany um, for product development, software development. I've been with Wago for 10 years. Um, I'm, I live in Portland, Oregon. Uh, most of us in the US are, are uh, distributed. I'm a software engineer who's worked in industrial automation my whole career. And uh, I was lucky enough to come up through industrial automation while there was a bit of a migration towards more open platforms. And I have uh, deployed tons of different tools, whether open source tools or closed source tools on thousands of machines. Um, and anybody that that uh, interfaces me, whether in my professional life or my personal life, knows that I just dearly love industrial automation. So um, I also really love contributing to communities, and it's the thing that really drew me to Node Red in the first place was that strong community and the community contributions, um, and the ability to also contribute to that community. But um, you know, when I talk a little about Wago, uh, it'll it'll make sense of how we can leverage these platforms so so nicely. But um, I have a pretty deep uh, GitHub um, presence. I love to make YouTube videos on fun little tools and tricks that I learned throughout my my travels, and I also um, have published nodes in the Node Red um, repos as well. So just a, a little bit about Wago. Um, I, I, I didn't want to make this a, a sales presentation, but I think it's interesting to, to learn the backstory. Our history in the automation space is really in modularity and in um, this platform agnostic approach to uh, industrial field bus communications and um, programming in general. We released our first automation products in the mid 90s. Um, we made the first protocol agnostic field bus IO system and made it also completely modular from a, from a hardware standpoint. So we could just kind of trim the fat and, and put stuff together kind of like Legos in order to create the right IO profile. Um, later on, uh, we released one of the first uh, industry, um, yeah, industry available ethernet based PLCs, which um, had a web server, which was fairly revolutionary at the time. And later on, um, in the, the early 2010s, we released the first 
Linux-based PLC to the market. And what that brought with it was quite a bit of, of networking capability. It brought uh, some the ability to, to do things modularly from a software standpoint as well. And so we leveraged this in some really interesting ways. I, I loved the, the um, presentation earlier on the um, on the Ming server. I think this is something that's been top of mind for the industry, my industry for quite a while. But um, several years ago, we started to uh, support officially support the Docker engine on our platform. And what Docker brought with it was the ability to containerize and modularize software. Um, the most prevalent tool um, that we apply this this Docker engine to is Node-RED. And we have leveraged Node-RED in so many different interesting ways running on um, in, in, in industrial automation systems and on automated machines. We often pair this with other softwares like Influx and Grafana, um, but we've really learned how to make the most of this kind of tool on um, an industrial control system. The new landscape of automation is, is getting pretty wild. And this is maybe the most exciting time, I think, in, in my lifetime to be part of uh, the automation realm. Um, it's because we have so many things at our fingertips and so much of this is community-based and so much of this requires a bit of, of kind of creative thought, how, how it's applied, a little bit of discipline in how you step into these projects. But, but you know, the, the, the world, of, uh, the ocean of, of automation now is deep um, and it can get fairly confusing. And I think it's one of the, one of the reasons that we tend to gravitate towards Node-RED is because it really tends to um, flatten out the learning curve for some of these other technologies and makes it a lot more accessible to, um, to users. So um, you can see we have a pretty deep menu of things that we can use here. Um, Node-RED definitely stands out as uh, one of the tools that we gravitate towards. Because of this, um, we've developed quite a bit on the platform to cater to this. Uh, a lot of these are, well, all of these are um, open source and no cost um, software tools that can be used with our with our products. So um, last year, uh, I finally published uh, a production ready or a, a late beta, I guess we can call it, uh, API to the IO system, which works directly with some node red um, nodes that were also published. So this allows you to interact with the controllers uh, directly without having to use some sort of interface or IO driver from the from the PLC runtime. So this has started, uh, this has allowed us to step out of the, the traditional PLC, um, you know, the, the traditional PLC programming paradigms and start to leverage these platforms directly without uh, requiring some closed source or proprietary runtime. All right, now I'm gonna kind of fly here because um, I know that time is gonna be Time's going to be tight already, and there's some interesting things to show. So let's just kind of step through what what an automation, what an industrial control system looks like. Um, you've typically got a programming IDE. Uh, the 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 common thread in in industry is that these are proprietary. They're usually target or platform specific. Um, they almost always require licensing of some sort, whether it's on the, the target or whether it's the IDE itself. And uh, these are almost all, I think, without exception, compiled. And they're compiled for the target, so they're rarely portable. There's an IO system involved almost always. Uh, the IO system um, typically is platform specific too and is locked to an internal protocol. Uh, there are field bus protocols that we deal with. So some of these were brought up earlier, things like Modbus or Ethernet IP or Profinet. Um, these are very common in industry and I'd say they're almost required still. Um, they can be library based, which means you can use function blocks to interface with them, but you're building those things programmatically. You can use configurator based um, networking managers. Those are typically locked to a platform and they're often vendor specific in their implementation. Uh, there's uh, typically an HMI involved in here or some sort of visualization. More and more there's a there's a bit of a bring your own device trend happening where these things are deployed either on phones or tablets, which require some HTML5 or some sort of web-based 
uh, HMI. But when those things are um, used from a, like a runtime IDE, they follow the, the path of like a WYSIWYG type of um, development tool, which does things to lock scales, et cetera. So they're not necessarily as scalable as um, something that's built on a more modern web framework. There's a data uh, and database component almost always to control systems now, which means they need to be able to inter interface with databases. And more and more we see this, especially in, in our world, there are connected clouds. And this is where things get a little bit tricky because uh, the way I like to phrase it is that JSON and IEC 611.31 are not friends. Um, we can kind of take a look at the at the logic um, flow of a control system and just see typically what's needed. So I pulled a use case here because um, we we've recently been working with some some projects on doing full machine control with Node Red, and this is a bit of an abstracted um, use case, but we're we've um, been able to kind of glean some some general logic here. So. We look at the workflow from the IC standpoint. Um, an RFID scan typically takes about two hours to code. The database queries, roughly two hours. Uh, we're often dealing with strings here, which become arrays of ASCII bytes, and you're doing quite a bit of manipulation of, of arrays here. We have to weigh the package. This is going to be, um, let's say, Modbus, and we need to, to scale some values from here. We need to write some logic to divert the package by weight. We need to write the conveyor logic for um, each downstream conveyor. We need to manifest this, this data uh, to a couple of places, in this case, AWS and, and MongoDB. But let's look at the same kind of time required for something like Node-RED, and this is where hyper automation comes in. The RFID scan is roughly five minutes. This is the benefit you get from a, a low code, no code kind of scenario. Query the database, uh, 20 minutes. Wait the package is an hour. The logic is 30 minutes. Conveyor logic is 30 minutes. These are typically about the same efforts uh, with both of them. Manifesting this data, um, packaging this data up into some tidy JSON. Uh, structure is a 10 minute event, and it's about 10 minutes to port that data to uh, AWS or Mongo. So, this is what we typically refer to as hyper automation, where we can select these, um, these components of a project and we can streamline them or, or make the development or prototyping of them um, extremely fast and extremely clean by implementing a, a no code or a low code type solution like Node Just to kind of get a little granular with this, um, when I talk about uh, IEC languages and um, JSON not being friends, it really is because uh, there's very there are very few mechanisms built into an IEC environment that allow you to just easily parse or build JSON structures. They they always become strings, and those strings always become arrays of ASCII bytes. So when they get parsed, for example. Um, it requires you to step through character by character. Unless you have a, a library, which there are more and more of um, every day, but the libraries still require a, a bit of um, IC knowledge and quite a bit of manipulation here. So contrast that against Node-RED where it's, it's really, I hate the word easy, but I'll gonna use it here. Now, portability is just as important in modern control systems, especially um, as of late with everybody seeing supply chain issues. If you try to buy a Raspberry Pi, for example, you know uh, what I'm talking about, or any other, um, any industrial control platform. Um, portability means everything right now and the ability to um, free, free yourself from, from being a, a one vendor type of operation. So this is another area where Node-RED really shines. Um, what I mean by that is that essentially we can run this tool on anything. And I, I would imagine that most people um, here watching this understand exactly what that means moving from device to device. But um, especially when it's containerized, we can run it on a directly on a web panel um, or any Linux-based panel. 
We can run this directly on the PLC if this is a Linux-based PLC, and we can also run these on um, computers in, you know, in that control network. Um, these typically can also be run on microcontrollers, local PCs or VMs, an on-premise server, cloud servers, etc. And since the code lives on the device and the code is, is um, you know, that this is the advantage, obviously, of it being scripted, uh, it can be portable from device to device and it can run on almost anything that would live in an industrial control system. Now, the topic comes up quite a bit of DevOps and deployment and how this works within an industrial control environment. More and more platforms um, like Codasys, um, and there are other companies that are, that are embracing the idea of um, revision control and, and more DevOps-based practices around, um, around a control system, but they're typically adapted to the IDE or adapted to the development tool not necessarily intrinsic from the beginning. And this is another area where no red really shines within our industry. So we've all, we've all seen this. If you're in the industrial controls world, you've seen this a million times of um, best practice of naming your projects with a version and then working and then final and then final, final and use this, et cetera. Um, this is a, this is a bit of a, a plague across the industry and um, it's it's becoming better and better but um, just given the structure of IDEs typically this is this has been the practice maybe not best practice but the practice across the industry for quite a while yeah and the deployment challenge is real the deployment challenge is um, maybe the biggest one the biggest topic right now and how we can um, combat you know, geographic challenges, um, technology challenges, security challenges, et cetera. So right now, um, the, even some of the best tools require um, IDE specific programming ports to be open on an, uh, on a target. They require some sort of VPN or natting of a, of a network so that you can gain access to it remotely. And any workarounds on this typically will institute an on-premise computer with proprietary software that has to be licensed and has to be managed just like you manage your local development machine. So this becomes um, very tricky to, to manage remotely. Um, and when we think about this kind of platform agnostic, you know, feature or, or um, yeah, uh, attribute that Node-RED brings, we can start to, to shed some of those things. So we can use tools like NPM to deploy the resources, the infrastructure and the dependencies for, um, for systems. We can leverage tools like Prescient. Um, I know Pablo was on here earlier, and Prescient's been just a fantastic partner of ours um, in helping us to overcome some of these deployment and, and remote code management challenges. So we can leverage Prescient for continuous deployment, flow development, um, cloud-based management, dashboarding, et cetera. Um, and then it allows us to also use Git in ways that Git was intended to be used with a, a true version control um, and a true, uh, yeah, collaboration tool. So we can follow proper Git flow behaviors and we can properly document our systems. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to fly through this last bit because I want to show just a really quick demo. So. The question becomes, can Node-RED control my entire machine? Uh, the answer is maybe. Um, I have a quick demo that I want to show, which is a sort by weight conveyor that uses um, a control panel interface. This is all virtualized. It's got some discrete sensors, some Modbus data coming from a scale and RFID, controlling a bunch of conveyors. Um, it's got database hooks as well as AWS hooks and a very simple visualization. But really what it comes down to is, is working through the project and looking at the, the components that can be, uh, that, that you can leverage Node-RED and you can start to step through those things. And what we're finding more and more is that we can use Node-RED to do, to do more tasks uh, and deeper in a, in a project. So if I can stop sharing real quick, I'm gonna share another screen. If 
back, let's just share this whole thing here. So what I've got here, hopefully you can see this just fine, is a, a virtualized conveyor system. And um, I've got no, no PLC control in this whatsoever. This is running on a, um, on a, on a WAGO controller, but the runtime has been shut off and it's been replaced by the node red flow. So um, this flow here, I think it's just under 80 lines of, of logic and it's doing all of the control for the machine plus the um, databasing and the cloud interactions as well. So let's give it a go. If we hit play here and we can turn on our control panel. So here we go. We can see the sensors here lighting up in the in the dashboard. And if I pull the flow over, we can see the data being processed through here. If we look at this in uh, AWS, we can also see the data coming through the IoT core as well. So this is just a, a really simple example of, of how we can leverage these tools to kind of streamline the, streamline the process, rapidly prototype. Um, these are the kind of ways that we're leveraging Node-RED in, um, in our realm. And as we do this, um, as we move through these, these applications, we tend to see more and more. It goes deeper and deep, deeper into um, how much we allow or how much we ask uh, these sorts of tools to, um, to do. All right, I came in right at 20 minutes, I think. Oh, there we go. <laughs> cool, I was just checking whether you wanted, yeah, we're fine for time, but that was that was great. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a really cool demo. I love the little actually clicking the buttons on the sort of physical panel to turn the thing on and stuff. Like, it's gotta, it's, we've got to get it as close to reality as we can, right? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got a we've got a couple of questions. Uh, I want to find my mouse. That uh, I think maybe that that demo almost shows, but um, I'm wondering is yeah. So from my cash, um, yeah, it, it's a generic node red red question, but maybe you're well placed for this. Um, digital twins. Have you does that does that kind of simulator environment ever get used for digital twin or? Yeah, you bet. Yeah, in fact, we can because we can uh, make a lot of that logic redundant, or we can we can. Um, split these data objects it's it's so easy to do in node red that we we often leverage it that way yeah cool and is that 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 um simulated you know, 3, 3d environment you know that's that's a wago a wago wago product or is that an internal tool or it's not no and i get asked about that a lot it's actually a a, a video game developer uh <laughs> who built this this tool is for for training on plc it's called factory io it's really a great tool for, you know, what we try so hard to remove ourselves from the abstract and start, you know, try to get closer to reality when we talk about these things. Um, it, it's really helpful for that. And it's, it's not limited to those components I showed. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. powerful. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, okay. Um, and another one from someone uh, from Hot Road Garage. Uh, do you have any customers running Node-RED in their production environment today? The question we always get. Um, yes, there are lots, but I don't know, maybe something something from your your background. It's a hard yes. Yeah, it's a yeah. hard yes. We we have, um, yeah, I'll do the math in my head real quick, but I, I feel confident saying dozens, if not, you know, something around 100 customers running Node-RED in production. Yeah, yeah, it it still amazes where they where it appears and things. Oh, and the dog's back. We'll think it later. <laughs> <laughs> right on cue. So as soon as I start talking, he hears my voice. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Well, um, I don't think I'll just give it a second. Any more questions, um, for Jesse? But uh, just scanning the um background. But uh, no. Okay. Well, we've got our next speaker. Um, I think waiting in the wings. So we'll uh, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much, Jesse. That was great. Thanks for including me. Yeah.